Lloyd, your town moderator, and welcome to the Southampton Town Moderator Information Session for our annual town meeting, uh, Tuesday, May 19th, and more than likely Wednesday, uh, May 20th, and it could even go to Thursday, May 21st, and we have in our bylaw that can go a fourth night, Friday, May 22nd, although no one I know, including myself, wants it to go beyond uh, two, two evenings. And the intent for this evening is to hear information uh, from those who are present and, and authors of articles, to hear information and to ask questions. So what we're not here to do is to debate, uh, to make presentations, or to vote to get a consensus of how we feel. That's all for the uh, town meeting. So what I will do is I will read each article when whoever is here that, that can give information on it. Great. Anyone not being here, feel free to ask questions. I'll write them down. We certainly can watch the video and we can uh, come up with answers for you uh, at least during the uh, town meeting. The, some of the articles this evening have four, five, six, seven parts to them. Uh, including the budget, and as moderator, I believe that's too much to uh, weigh in on a $16 million budget or a six-part CPA article. So uh, the prerogative of the moderator is to divide the question, and I've done that successfully in the past, and then we vote on each part of that original article. We don't need to vote on all of them together at the end. and. Um, what we'll do also is, since we've broken the barrier of a second evening, we will allow anyone from the floor with a good reason to make a motion to postpone a particular article to the second evening. That was frowned upon originally because we tried to get everything done in one evening. But since it appears more than likely we will be going to a second evening, although nothing is guaranteed, um, with good reason, uh, and, it, and it would be up to the town to vote uh, on that, to, the, to postpone it to a second evening, but uh, essentially, that, and that's paper in the front row. Uh, essentially, that's what we'll do. Let's go Article 1, Presentation of Education Awards. To see if the town will vote to hear presentation of Richard C. Allen Education Awards sponsored by the Southampton Highway Department and Transportation. Transfer station. And that historically has been the town honoring certain students uh, with some financial rewards, and there's a nice ceremony. Ceremonies are not, um, they're frowned on in town meetings, and so this is designed to fit nicely under an article and all as well. Article 2 presentation of certificates to see if the town will vote to hear presentation of state. Certificates. I have no knowledge of that. Does anybody? So this is our town administrator, Heather. Hi, town administrator Heather Bedrowitz. Um So this is the article that I've actually been working on very closely with Janine. We have a few mm -hmm. residents who have served the town in many capacities over a period of years, and we want an opportunity to honor them. I know in the past has been concern about having a certificate ceremony in the middle of town meeting so we put it on as an article we actually have certificates coming from the state level that will be presented to a few various individuals in the town at town meeting they don't know about it so i don't want to announce who good that's the way it should be any questions article three to change transfer collector to appointed position, FY16. Save the town consistent with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 41, Section 1B. will vote to have the elected position of treasury collector become an appointed treasury collector of the town, provided, however, that this vote is contingent upon successful passage of a ballot question pertaining thereto on a town ballot. If approved and the office becomes appointed any incumbent serving at the time of voter acceptance continues to serve until the remainder of his or her term expires. Such appointment shall be made by the Board of Selectmen for a term not to exceed three years unless such mode of appointment or term is otherwise provided by law. 
Uh, this is the, if not the same wording, very similar wording to last annual town meeting, and that uh, motion under this article uh, was tabled or killed. No, no. I, it's not intended to. I think oh, it's not intended. No, I'm just saying that when an article is tabled or it's killed, um, essentially it can rise again and come up another year with, with no tie-in to uh, last year or the, you know, several years before. So, sir, what he's saying is this article, this is its second visit to the warrant. It was on last annual town meeting's warrant and it revisited this year. Um, John, John? It was tabled last year. When it's tabled at that annual town meeting, it means it's not brought up later on in that annual town meeting, but it can be brought up at another meeting at another time. As a new article. John, I need you to speak at the mic so everybody can hear you at home. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So essentially, when an article is tabled or killed, it's reinvented the next year and there's no tie-in. Uh, or responsibility to pass it on uh, to another year, another meeting. Let me understand this a little bit. This was tabled at the last town meeting? Is that what This you're was saying? tabled at the last annual town meeting. It was visited before then, but the last annual town meeting, this was tabled, and that means killed, done away with, gone. But yeah, it's been a, it a can be brought of time. up again. It's been a period of time. It can be brought up again as a new article on a new meeting. So who's going to move that article? Um, the select board, uh, it's the select board's article, so they will read it, they will move it. I see. Uh, so this is for the treasurer, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So if I can just say a couple things to this. So this is to pretty much bring us up to speed with a lot of other communities in the state of Massachusetts where the treasurer collector is no longer an elected position, but they're an appointed position. One of the concerns that's been brought up numerous times, and the same reason that other communities have switched this to an appointment as opposed to an election, is there's always the concern that what, ha what happens if maybe we're a small town, and maybe we have no one who's qualified to be treasurer in the community, and you're essentially electing someone to come in and take care of all the town's books, we take care of all the Heather, town's bonds. Heather, and we, we, just before you came in, we, we really said no presentation, so we really have to deal not with the reasons why, I then have to accept the reasons no. And so this is an information meeting and all the presentations. I, I think his question, though, Mr. Moderator, was pertaining to why this is on here and why it's being I answered, presented I answered forward. him. And he seems satisfied, so I'm continuing. Well, I, I do have another question to the uh, lady over here. She mentioned that this is found throughout Massachusetts. Could you give me a number of towns that have done this and the number of towns that have not done this? I can bring that number to the annual town meeting. I don't have it in front of me right now, but it is a very large percentage that is moving towards the direction of appointment. Thank you. Article 4, adopt tax revolving fund in Massachusetts general laws provision, fiscal 16, to see if the town will vote to accept the provisions of Massachusetts general law 60, uh, subchapter 15B, and to authorize the town accountant to establish a tax title collection revolving fund for the treasurer collector or take any action related thereto. Uh, there is a note, acceptance of this master in the law sets the stage to establish a tax title collection revolving fund, which in turn will make collection of back taxes somewhat easier and that fees and related charges will now be paid from the revolving fund rather than from the limited general funds. Article 14A on this warrant establishes the revolving fund as allowed by acceptance of this Massachusetts general law. And there's a note, see attachment four for a copy of the Massachusetts General Laws, which will be uh, present at the annual town meeting. Any questions on this one? Can, can I just add one line? Sure. Sometimes folks get confused on why we're accepting the provisions of a certain Mass General Law, and the law itself requires that step. So this, in this case, this, Article 4 itself does not automatically establish the revolving fund. It just says that the town of Southampton accepts this general law so that we can 
establish a revolving fund. And that's in this warrant as well, but it's later on in another article. Thank you. Article 5, Transfer Operating Stabilization, Fiscal 15. Note, stabilization funds are reserves dedicated for specific use at some future time. Under state statutes, a town may appropriate up to 10% of the previous year's tax levy into the funds as long as the balance does not exceed 10% of the town's equalized valuation, EQV. The stabilization accounts are accounts from which amounts may be appropriated for any lawful purpose. Interest earned on the fund balance is retained as part of the fund. A two-thirds vote by town meeting is required to appropriate money in or out of these funds. The current balance for operating stabilization account is $261,534.93. To see if the town will vote to transfer the amount of 15000 to cover additional encumbered legal expenses and some shall be taken into the operating stabilization account. Requires a two-third vote. There's a note. In fiscal 15, the sum of 22500 was allocated to the legal expense line. Up to this point, the average monthly expenditure has been approximately $1,000 and some ch change per month. Looks like it's cut off a little bit at the end. A legal project was engaged in per the select board and the predicted cost of $17,000 in order to avoid deficits at the end of fiscal 15 budget year transferring $15,000 shall help balance out the overdrawn account that was a mouthful yes yeah thanks Mike Bueller 88 high what was the project um, it was a legal expense that was endeavored by the Board of Selectmen. As the Board, they don't have to specify what they're spending legal funds on whenever they're consulting the attorneys. Thank you. B, transfer operating stabilization. To see if the town will vote to transfer the amount of $10,000 to cover police department communication wages. Said sum shall be taken from the operating stabilization account. Requires a two-thirds vote. Note, the current FY15 budget for communications is $172,946. dollars In 2013, communication wages came to $185,634. In 2014, they came to $188,169. And in 2015, it is predicted they will reach $185,888. At this current time, it is not predicted that we will have enough unused general fund expenses to cover the $13,000 gap in communication wages. Adding $10,000 to the communication line for fiscal 15 will bring the number to $182,946. Questions on that? Article 6. Residents petition, health agent. I move to fund the Board of Health salary line for the position or positions of health agent in the fiscal year 2016 budget to be the amount of $38,836.80 annually. This salary item is exclusive of any necessary cost, expenses, and benefits customarily paid to town employees or for that position. Note, inserted at request of Lisa Broder, McGann, and 15 others, this is an article submitted by residents of the town and see attachment six for the petition. Uh, any resident can come up with a petition. You need 10 signatures for an annual town meeting. It's not wise for the town nor for the town's attorney to reword it legally because you be distorting the intent of the article. So it is as it's written. However, as in any article, a motion is designed to take the rough edges out of an article, yet to keep within the four corners of each article. So we don't know what that motion will be yet. And 10 signatures for an annual and 100 signatures for a special town meeting. 
and nobody's here to talk about that, so I will continue. All right. Yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. Yes, of course. Um, what is the current bud uh, budgeted amount or budgeted salary for that position? Approximately 35000 for the FY16 year, which is $3,000 more than FY14. FY15, sorry. So there's a $3,000 gap. And the thought is to... Well, it's, it's actually... I, I just want to make sure Michael's clear and everyone's clear at home. So in FY15, there were two positions. There was a health agent position and a clerical position. These positions um, were essentially two different rates that added up to approximately $35,000. Moving forward, FY16, to provide flexibility to the Board of Health, since they weren't sure if they needed a full-time agent, a full-time clerical, part-time agent, whatever combination. We combined them into one line for just Board of Health wages, essentially. Therefore, remember before, the two added up to 30, 32000 Now they add up to 35000 So we actually put in 3000 additional. Over and above the $3,000, they are asking for 3000 more in this article. Does that help? So there's con I have concern that theoretically this article passes for 38,000. There's a line item for 35 in the budget. It could pass again. So we we could. Uh, so my con my concept is to suggest the town move this article to after the budget, and then allow only the $3,000 delta to be considered it when the budget. Uh, is voted on, but we'll deal with that at the town meeting. Article 7, transfer a WPAT loan repayment, fiscal 16, to see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of $20,401 to fund the authorization of WPAT bonds. Said sum shall be taken from the WPAT loan repayment account. This is just housekeeping. It's our regulatory transfer we do annually. Questions? No? Okay. Go to Article 8. Transfer ambulance fee account, FY16. To see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of $75,000 to fund the EMS ambulance related expenses. Said sum shall be taken from the ambulance receipts reserved for appropriation account. This is something we do annually. We'll put the balance on here when we get to annual town meeting. But essentially, over the years, we've taken various amounts to go into the regular revenue fund. These are funds that are raised from the use of our ambulance service and billing. Um, we transfer the funds back to the fire department for ambulance-related fees so that the money comes back over. We try not to drain the account entirely so we have funds for other things. And there's a later article for 25000 to go into ambulance stabilization account for the purchase of a new ambulance years down the road. Thank you, Heather. Article 9, Appropriation Transfer Station, FY16. To see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of 215... Uh, I'm sorry. There's a revised. Oh, it is? It's, it's $222,363 on the official warrant. Okay. For the transfer station enterprise fund. And um, the revenues are broken out in permits, charges, bag fees, recycling, uh, investment income, retained earnings, WPAT subsidies, subsidies, and to be expended as follows. Expenses are broken up on the wages, operating expense, debt service, principal and interest, plus indirect cost. Any questions? Article 10, Appropriation Water Department, FY16, to see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of $633,999.32 for the Water Enterprise Fund. And that is broken out in revenues, water charges, hookup charges, investment income, retained earnings, and WPTA subsidies, subsidies to be expended as follows. Expenses, salaries, and wages operating expenses, capital outlay, debt service, plus indirect cost. Robert, Robert 
you said enterprise fund. Is that what you said? Yes, water enterprise fund. Okay. Yeah. Understand. Article 11, Omnibus F-16, Budget FY-16, to see if the town will vote to fix salaries of all elected officials for the fiscal year 2016 for the period of July 1st, 2015 to June 30th, 2016, and further to raise and appropriate monies as identified in the town's omnibus budget as attached for such fiscal year. So just to summarize for those at home, this year's revenues came in at 16,427,544 is what we predict. Um, we did this process a little bit different this year with adding in a few other things to our revenue. So you now see the actual um, enterprise funds that the moderator just spoke about in the previous article, those amounts, the 633000 and the 222000 are part of our revenue. We've also included things that generally pass through. The money we get from the state for the public libraries is included in this. Um, the money we get for school choice incoming for the students over at Norris School that goes to the school committee to utilize for their free cash fund, that comes in through this as well. You see it pass out passed through rather over in the expense report, but this was suggested to change by the Department of Revenue and how we do this. When you turn the sheet and you get to the expense report, it's a balanced budget, so it's in the same amount. It's for $16,427,544. In the expense report, it's also set up so you see the pass-throughs. So if you look further down, you'll see things coming out such as the enterprise fund minus the indirect costs. So that's left in. Indirect costs, for those who aren't familiar, are the funds that are actually credited to the town for the work that's done in the other departments. So for the cost that the treasurer has to spend doing water bills for the Water Enterprise Fund, those hours are calculated into the indirect costs. So that actually stays in as direct revenue, kind of inverse of what we're saying. It's, it's kind of a weird thing. Um, another thing such as that, the other things with the expense sheet is you actually see, as we talked about before, the pass-throughs, and you also see the cherry sheet pieces, things we were assessed by the state come out of this as well. Thank you, Heather. Is, when these are printed out for everyone, can we get back to a horizontal format with larger print versus what we have here? It's really hard to read. We're going to be dividing the question. I, uh, at the town I meet. kept all the sections together. I don't know if we can, we can probably try to put it on horizontal formatting or and make expand, it slightly, slightly expand bigger. Or expand the type because it's really, really difficult uh, for those to read. Thank you. Any questions on the budget? Yes, Mike, do you? What are the most significant differences or changes from FY15? It's always a funny question when that's asked because for us, anything at $1,000 or more is significant. The most significant. Um, the most significant. Let's see. Uh, the school piece got divvied up a little bit different because we have net school spending. So you actually see that Nora School is actually level funded to what we funded them in January. And I think it's 3696000 and some change. Um, Smith Vocational went up. Last year, we funded at about 830000 This year, we're expected to have tuitions around 939000 So that's significantly higher in that way. Um, we actually increased funding our legal expenses from 25000 to 40000 because there hasn't been a single year in the past four or five that we haven't really spent below 40000 So we want to kind of spearhead that. Um, we added $10,000 to communication wages off the bat, so we're actually already in the right direction for that piece. $10,000 was added to police department wages because in years past, they used to transfer $10,000 from the ambulance receipts over to the police for EMT purposes and training, but the auditor said we could no longer do that because they did not believe that to be within the use of ambulance or related 
expenses. So to make up the difference, because they had been relying on that $10,000, we just put $10,000 in the account to begin with. Some accounts are slightly higher or slightly lower based on expenses. We <coughs> leveled everybody so that if you are a normal employee in this building, you're not under contract, you're not under union, you work no more than 31 hours a week, so everyone's on the same page and doesn't, it's not really battling one department against another department. We restored one department with 1,000 and some change to get the person back up to 20 hours, which was the lowest. Usually it's 20, 18 to 20 hours or 31 unless you are a contract employee in, in this town building. Uh, a couple of things have 1,000 or 2,000 added to them, whether it's for specific certification and training, such as the accountant, so she can actually go to a class and be able to get certified. There was $1,500 added to the treasurer's line for expenses so she can upgrade her software that hasn't been upgraded in years. Um, we added slightly more into the technology expenses for the purposes of being able to continually upgrade our software. Right now we're still running four computers on XP. So we fixed that this year, but we're hoping not to run into that in years ahead by keeping up with it. Um, other changes were we tried to make things more transparent. So at the library that used to have two lines, one was expenses and one is wages, now has about four or five lines. So it kind of breaks things down a little bit more. There's an expense and books line. So you know what really they're required to pay or fund from the state. I'm sorry, let me back up. The state has an accreditation procedure. We struggled last year to fund the library high enough for them to maintain their accreditation. So the first step was to make sure we funded them high enough so they could continue their accreditation. The second step was actually to try to fund them what they actually had to spend on books and expenses. In past years, we've only funded them at 50%. So this year, we funded them closer to the whole. Um, we tried to restore a little bit of counsel on aging because we had depleted their expense line down to 400 bucks and they had asked for 1820, which we didn't find ridi ridiculous, so we reinstated that amount. Other things we did is we pulled out account lines for maintenance. We separated town hall and Larrabee um, custodial expenses, so things, you could see things better and understand really what was happening. I think that's the majority of the major changes. Michael, does that answer your question? Okay, excellent. And I trust you don't have a follow-up question. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Tammy Willunas, 298 College Highway. So this Article 11 says that to see if the town will vote to fix salaries on all elected officials. So it, I want to make sure that you know, I'm hearing you rattling off everything mm -hmm. that we've done, but is that really saying that the salaries are going to be fixed? And we, there's going to be no pay raises and things like that? First of all, Timmy, let's, let's clarify this. So this is a standard language that we've been using for years and years. Mm -hmm. Some communities actually have elected officials who get paid. So Board of Selectmen might get a $200 stipend. In years past, our Board of Registers received between the four of them a split of $600 stipend. Um, that is no longer in the budget this year, and no other elected official, to my knowledge, receives a stipend or any pay. Okay. All elected officials are purely volunteer, unless there's two exceptions, the treasurer and the town clerk, because they are still elected at this point. So I guess they would qualify under that line, but no one gets pay raises in the town without the union unless overall the town says we're going to do a 1% raise, 2% raise, or whatever. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. I think Michael had a follow-up question, unless that was it. Yeah, does the budget include any transfers into the stabilization funds, especially No, it capital? does not. It does not. Um, this year what we did was when the Board of Selectmen had adopted the free cash policy in late fall, the free cash policy helped assist to maintain those funds. 35% of free cash was going into capital, 25% into operating stabilization, 10% into our OPEB, which is other post-employment benefits, so we can start catching up the liability in that piece, and then the remainder we utilized as necessary for if someone was underfunded, if we got into a crisis with something, what have you. 
that we utilize. Um, at this point in time, I think we have approximately, my slide shows, showed it better, about $37,000 left in free cash remaining. But our operating stabilization fund, I believe the moderator already read the balance of in the previous articles when we were transferring the 10 and the 15. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. The town moderator in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts uses as our Bible, town meeting time, a handbook of parliamentary law, and it's not Robert's Rules of Order. And there are a lot of, a lot of motions that can be made, and I want to review some of them um, more, more actively used uh, historically. Um, an article to amend, uh, once the motion is made and seconded, the article's on the floor. It's a basketball. It's the towns, you're playing with it, you can do what you want with it. One of the things that can be done is you can amend the article. You can amend the meaning of it, you can take out something, you can lower the amount, you can't raise the amount, that gets into a slippery slope and I as moderator um, subscribe to other moderators that don't allow that. So I've kept that going for 10 years now. But you, you can amend an article, and, and when you amend an article, I have to repeat it. And when I have to repeat it, it, it has to be written down because I'm not going to remember it. So the town clerk who is at the town meeting has to receive a copy. So essentially, when somebody wants to make an amendment, they know in advance, good idea to write it out in duplicate and simply pass it in as you stand and be recognized and make the amendment. The amendment has to be seconded, which normally everything is seconded. Then there's a discussion, not on the article, but on the amendment. And the concept of discussion in a town meeting is the merits or lack thereof of the article or an amendment. And if somebody would say they would like the sign to be painted blue, hypothetically, then we don't really encourage nor need a second, third, fourth person to say they'd like the sign to be blue. So it's not how many people say the same thing that sort of wins over the audience, uh, the meeting. It's, it's coming up with different points of view. And in some towns, they ask the author, uh, the proponent of each article to speak, and then religiously ask the opponent, somebody who's against it, even with an organized presentation. Uh, we're not that organized, but we certainly encourage pros and cons. And again, when an amendment is made, we vote on that amendment. And that amendment succeeds, it's part of the original motion. And then we talk about the original motion. If and when that amendment fails, then we forget about it as if it never happened and we go to talk about that emotion, that motion. And if someone uh, who's not in the audience or certainly watching this later or now on TV, if somebody wants to make an amendment and you're not sure, I have pads of paper up in front of the town meeting, raise your hand, I'll walk you through the process. To table, what does table mean? Somebody can immediately say, um, I motion to table, and that essentially means, I don't like using the word, but that essentially means to kill. And just stop talking about the article, just let it go away. And that needs a two-thirds vote, two-thirds ma majority vote. There is no discussion. So at any point in a discussion of the motion under an article, somebody can make a motion to table. That being seconded, immediately there is a motion, all those in favor of tabling, and we've had this here, uh, and it needs two-thirds. It succeeds, next article, that article is forgotten as we've had one from last annual town meeting. To pass over, what does that mean? Well, sometimes things change between when the articles are created and the warrant is posted, something happens or didn't happen. And so we, we know that, we know that in advance. So rather than tossing the basketball, if you will, out on the court, um, anyone who is reading the motion, and in our case, it's our tradition and custom to have the selectmen read the motion. But there has been times in the last several years where, for some reason, a particular motion 
Nobody was reading it. It took somebody in the audience to take their copy of the motion, to read the motion, second it, and put the ball in play. So if and when a select board knows an article needs to be passed over for financial reasons, legal reasons, other reasons, the person reading uh, or going to read the motion will simply say, uh, we need to pass this over and give a reason, and then a majority can vote and the motion under that article is passed over, not discussed, not voted on, and it, it can be defeated. I mean, the town could say, no, we want to vote on it, and then even if it was illegal and the motion under the article passed, it doesn't make it law. You, you can't make an article law that's illegal. Postpone um, to a time certain. Uh, Somebody can motion, we will have discussion to postpone an article to the next evening for whatever reason. Uh, and it's up to the town by majority to, to decide whether or not, no, we're going to uh, hear it, everything, debate it, vote on it now, or good idea, we'll, we'll do it to a time certain. And so our case, 7 o'clock the next evening would, would be a, a suggestion. Uh, shifting an order, uh, if one of these large articles, such as the budget or the safety complex, was the last article, it would be my duty to not allow seniors to drive home at 10 o'clock or those with poor vision or those who have babysitters that can't stay to 10. We start at 7 and we go to 10, but the town could continue it. So when it's a, it's a controversial article or a large article or a large sum of money, my concept is to move it up earlier uh, in the meeting or uh, for the first time I will consider a motion to postpone it to a time certain, meaning the next evening. And um, that's a majority uh, shifting the order. Uh, stopping the debate, calling the question, the previous question. Anyone is entitled to do that. It basically means let's stop talking about this and let's vote on this now. The vote is simply to stop the debate. Then we, if it passes by two-thirds, then we vote on the motion. It gets confusing. Some people say, am I voting? To, and I, I've been in the audience, too. Am I voting to stop the debate or am I voting on the motion? And it, it gets tricky. I don't allow that generally because I see hands up, so I'll just simply parry away that motion and allow debate to continue unless there's a pause or unless we've been going for a long time. So as a moderator, I exercise my right when I see hands up and questions. So you have a question? You're getting in uh, position, John. Well, oh, you have to get up to the mic so people can hear you. I can hear you, but we can't hear you at home, as is an evidence of many well, I understand that uh, the only written motion that you would require would be for an amendment. Is that correct? Correct. How about right. to divide the motion? Um, the town can ask to divide the, mo the, the motion. Was that in writing? I, no, not at all. Okay. Um, no, because it's, no, it's, 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 a, for, it's, it's a, a known format. It's not a unique creation by someone. So, right, correct. Thank you, Robert. You're welcome, John. Point of order. Simply, I do something incorrect. Uh, when I do something incorrect, somebody can immediately say, point of order, Mr. Moderator, stand up, state their name, and state what their point of order is. And then I will, whoops, back off, uh, correct it, or no, I believe I'm correct, and we continue. And that doesn't need a vote, that doesn't need a majority. Um, somebody can contest the announcement of a vote, that happened in my first meeting. I heard all those in favor, aye, all those opposed, nay. So I went one way and somebody stood up and said, um, I you know, challenged a vote. And I had read the manual and I knew it takes seven individuals. So I said to them, you need six more people. And they stood up immediately, sprouted up like spring flowers. And we counted the vote and I was incorrect. Uh, so I, I, I do not go by the, the, the audible uh, voice vote. And we have counters. And counters count the hand votes holding the squares of paper we pass out. 
I've initiated something last year with the town clerk, which I witnessed in Williamsburg. I go to annual meetings in other towns to see what I could do better, uh, to see what I'm not doing so great, or to get confirmation that we're, we're doing the right thing. And they had double counters counting each vote. And I watched them, and they had to count a vote three times. They each had different numbers. And it, we do this once a year. Um, let's, let's do it right. And so that's why you'll see two counters now. And the other thing that I, I, I've introduced um, several years ago and uh, is not to have the counter whisper in the moderator's ear the count. That leads to difficulties for future moderators. So I want each counter to announce at the mic what the count is so we all hear it at the same time. We can do our own math together and there's a discrepancy. Somebody will, will, will call it. How about a secret ballot? Are you going to entertain a motion for a secret ballot? Will you take a separate vote here? There's, there, 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 um, there's some aspects that I, I, will, I will brush up on, I promise, before the meeting. Um, there are some towns that don't allow it, either by law. Um, there's some that do, and it would be up to the town to decide. It would be up to the town to decide. So somebody would make a motion. Right, right, correct, correct. Tammy. Mr. Moderator, you said that you observe other towns' annual meetings. Yes. There are several that do their meeting on a Saturday morning. We used to do it on a Saturday. I fought it to remain on a Saturday and not to be in any evening eight years ago. And um, it, it, it had a, a longer time frame allowable. Uh, historically, uh, way back, there would, we would have an election that same morning, and then the new selectman and the new moderator would take over the meeting later in, in the day. Um, it got to be a picnic. It got to be an extreme social event. Um, there was debate, and it was changed. Uh, that's something that uh, could be considered. It would have to be, I believe, an article on a town meeting. I doubt it would be an arbitrary decision uh, in a select board meeting. So as it stands now, it's in the evening. Okay. So the bylaw would have to be changed. And to change the bylaw, we would have to have an article. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So if you get 100 signatures for a special or wait until the next annual of 10 signatures, it can be an article on the ballot. Proposition two and a half override debt exclusions. No, a proposition two and a half override uh, permanent and a debt exclusion duration of the loan requires a two-step process that can be done in any order. One, appropriation of a town meeting, and two, referendum of a town election. So any of these upcoming articles that we're going to talk about, it passes, then the select board can decide to put it on uh, for an election. To be law, it would have to pass the town meeting and the election. And it can be put on a special election, but then it would need to go to a special or to an annual town meeting for passage for it to be uh, legal. And I imagine if and when an article fails, that technically, legally, the select board could put that same wording of that article on a special election. It passes, then it would have to come up again at another meeting. You concur? I do. The one thing with these is it has to be by, I, there's a date in September, I want to say it's something like September 15th, in order to set the tax recap um, and the tax rate yeah, for, there's the, for the There's a deadline and then there's a 45-day window for the election to occur, but that's essentially um, the ground rules. A proposition two and a half, uh, second shift, advanced life support, fiscal 16, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds a sum of money not to exceed $135,000 to supplement the fire department's advanced life support ambulance service to add a second shift for fiscal year 2016 contingent 
upon the passage of a Proposition 2 and a half so-called override pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 59, Section 21C, referendum question. And there's a note, this article would allow for the addition of a second shift staffed at the fire station to expand our part-time coverage of ambulance calls, ambulance calls. The article carries with it an approximate 21 cents per thousand dollar increase in the tax rate and would remain as a permanent increase. Chief, would you like to speak? John Workman, Fire Chief. Um, this is an opportunity for the town to vote on what level of ambulance service they would like to have. Um, when I came to town, uh, we had just gone to a professional level AL, uh, AL, uh, excuse me, ALS service. <laughs> um, and with that service, um, we'd been working a shift of uh, uh, nine hour days that go from uh, eight in the morning until five at night, seven days a week. Um, we have a standby shift um, that covers from six at night until six in the morning. Uh, some of the problem with that is that there's a gap between those shifts um, from six in the morning until eight when the next shift starts mm -hmm. and from five until six o'clock when the next standby shift uh, would t come into place. Um, it represents, when you look at the time that I've been here, um, that gap that doesn't have anyone um, dedicated to the force, um, we get about 9.8% of our calls. Um, mostly we, we do a good job of covering those calls because anyone who has a radio can respond to them. Um, but we are looking to add in a second shift, so we would, uh, currently our shift covers about 51% of our calls. If the second shift would start at 6 a.m., so there wouldn't be a gap, and go till 10 at night, um, this would cover approximately 81% of our calls, um, and it would make the nighttime standby coverage um, easier to get um, commitment from people to take. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Workman. Any questions? Yes. Chief? Yes. And let me, uh, if I may, uh, my pleasure to introduce for the first time publicly, I believe, our new selectman, Charles Kanicki. Thank you. <laughs> that seems strange sitting on this side of the table. I will give it that. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Chief, this uh, article talks about the ambulance service, but does not this enhance our fire service also? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we talk about the ambulance service just because we're the town has been, um, they take, they'd signed a contractor with the state to try and go to ALS service. Um, but when we have members that are there for the ambulance, if there's a fire call, we, they're available for the fire department response. So it would cover both ambulance and fire calls for that time. Okay, I didn't want to have that get lost. No, in no, it's a, it's, a, it's a good point. Um, predominantly, we are an ambulance service that we do our majority of calls with the ambulance, but we certainly have our, our percentage of fire calls, and it's good to have people available. Yeah, and this is basically just a normal evolution of the town. Absolutely. As it grows. Yeah, this is the town moving in a direction, um, giving, offering services to the, the citizens of the town to uh, get emergency medical uh, care at an uh, at advanced level, which really um, is your best opportunity to have a quality of life if you have a, a problem and you know, heart attack, uh, you know, your child has an illness. Um, if we can be there with a, with a medic and an ambulance in a short period of time, that's a, a tremendous service. Um, the cost, we are doing it without um, any full-time people besides myself. Um, it's the, uh, we're not paying health insurance or vacation pay. Uh, it really is um, a lot of coverage and a lot of service for the town uh, for the money spent. Well, being someone that's being pointed out that I'm getting older. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say that. <laughs> you didn't, but everyone around me is telling me this. It's probably timely. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you, uh, Fire Chief Workman. Yes, question. Robert, would you refresh my memory here? Uh, what article are we talking about here? We're talking about and Article 12A. Who proposed it? Um, this was the uh, uh, Fire Chief. Um, with, with, the, 10 with, the with 10 other citizens. With 10 other citizens? 
Uh, citizens, we only have one <laughs> citizen support uh, for, for that article. Um, we will divide the question for the two and a half. That's my plan for the two and a half and, 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 and for, the, uh, for the override articles. And we will vote on each one individually. Any more questions on uh, A? B, Article 12B, Proposition 2 and a half, FY16. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds a sum of money not to exceed $63,000 to meet the costs retired to retain the position of one police officer contingent upon the passage of a Proposition 2 and a half, so-called override, pursuant to a Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 59, Section 21C, referendum question. And there's a note. This article would allow for the departed police officer's position to be replaced, covering the entire cost of the officer, training, educational incentive by contract, employment cost, and employee benefits. This article carries with it an approximate nine cents per thousand increase in the tax rate and would remain as a permanent increase. And there will be a attachment 12B uh, for a complete breakdown of this position. So first of all, I, I guess two pieces on this, Mr. Moderator. The first is <laughs> that anyone in town hall, essentially, and anyone can suggest to the Board of Selectmen that they'd like to see something on as an article. This is their warrant. So with the exception of the health agent position being a resident petition, the Board of Selectmen have to decide that they want something to stay as an article and keep it on the warrant. So regardless of whose idea it was for the second shift advanced life support, the Board of Selectmen supported it to move it forward onto the town warrant. Um, same thing with the police department piece. The $63,000 was actually, the Board of Selectmen had asked the police chief to put together some numbers to figure out what the actual cost was. There had been numerous discussions over the past several months pertaining to how does this town move forward with regards to either continuing costs or new costs. Um, as Charlie and others have alluded to in the past, the town is growing and eventually we're going to need to add either additional services. Maybe we need to add additional police officers, a second shift at the fire station, additional teachers. Whatever the cost is, the problem is the current budget as funded cannot maintain and continue to cover those costs as well as everything else that's already in existence. So the idea was to use a different approach. The approach simply being, take it to the town residents and say, do you want this service? It's up to you. It takes it out of the political hands. It essentially says, from the town side, we think this would be a great benefit to add to the town. How do the residents feel about it? If you'd like it, that's fine. Here's the cost. It's going to be nine cents per thousand for the police officer, or in the previous one, 21 cents per thousand for the second shift at the fire station. But it's up to the town residents what they feel they need and what they feel they want to move forward on. But essentially, it puts the power into the hands of the public. Um, the 63,000, all of these attachments that Mr. Moderator has alluded to are all currently attached to the warrant. You can find the warrant, the attachments, and also a slideshow that elaborates on the budget at our website. There's actually a direct link right after the picture that gives you all that information. If you're Ms. Tammy Bulunis over there, she's currently looking at that document as we speak on her phone. So our website is, yeah. is able to view on mobile, which is nice. Um, but this position itself is broken down. And the theory we had utilized was whether it was maintaining a current position or adding a new position to cover all the costs of the position. Sometimes there's hidden things that we don't generally see. And this is really an effort of the town to be transparent with the public and say, Here's the exact cost of the officer with this, train, with this education. Here's the exact cost of the incentive that we're required to pay by contract. Here's the exact cost of how much it costs to send this person to the academy, et cetera, et cetera. So there really are no surprises, and it can be something that can be maintained over the years. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Any questions? Yeah, John? This is still You're gonna, yeah, we're not, we don't hear. Speakers, yeah. Each one of these, each. Well, it would be one election with um, five overrides and then the other vote. Yeah, so there'd be. At, and it goes to the town for a vote. Correct. 
The, uh, the question was, uh, what's the procedure here? And, and these overrides and where another article mentions it has to have an election, there would be a special town election, not the annual on Monday, May 4th, but one coming up in the near future. And these articles, as worded, can't really shift the words around, so they're carefully worded, would be on the election ballot. They would be worded slightly different. Um, we are required for Prop 2 and a half questions to follow <laughs> essentially the Prop 2 and half guideline that is put out by the Department of Revenue. We've actually worked very closely with Bond Council to make sure we do things correctly, especially on the capital request. On the Prop 2 and a half, the concern last year from folks was that it was really hard to understand. It was hard to understand it was a permanent piece. The problem is we have no ability to go in and change the wording of it. We're required to follow the law to the letter and it might be antiquated at some points, but we're still required to do it. There are, in this case, as Mr. Moderator alluded to, there's five things under Section Article 12 here. A through C are all Prop 2 and a half overrides, which means they're permanent. The town residents may support one, they may support two, maybe they support three, maybe they support none of them. And then at that point, after the annual town meeting, it will be up to the Board of Selectmen to decide you know, maybe all of them are supported, and we should go forward and put all three on a special election. Maybe they say, you know what, I think we should only focus on one or two. Maybe they say, you know what, I don't think this is the right time. Let's not do any of these three. Same thing is going to happen with the two debt exclusions on Article 12D and Article 12E. The same piece. It does require the two steps. Now, sir, going back to your question, because there was an article pertaining to the treasurer to be appointed. That too would have to go on as an article, but it wouldn't, it doesn't have such the same time frame, so it could go on a later election. Maybe it's the only thing that goes on the election. Well, I don't have share. <laughs> well, it, 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 <laughs> I generally just allude to the town in general with the we, but in this case, it might be you. But as the uh, a member in the audience you know, uh, mentioned, a lot of ifs here. Was, there is there is freedom, but 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 the the finish line is it has to pass either an election uh, first or uh, town meeting or vice versa. The proposition two and a half FY sixteen to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds a sum of money not to exceed one hundred twenty. 100,000 to supplement the elementary school budget in order to maintain classroom teaching positions that will otherwise be eliminated, thereby increasing class size and jeopardizing continued service to students contingent upon the passing of a Proposition 2 and a half so-called override pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 59, Section 21C. It's an interesting read, by the way, Chapter. Uh, very late at night. I went over it a couple of times. I don't know if I slept well after reading it, but I did read it. Referendum question. Heather? Um, so on this one here, this was something that was requested to be put on by the school, or at least the Board of Selectmen asked the school if they were interested in putting something forward. This is still currently before the school board, so we don't know what they're going to say as far as yes, we want 120000 or they can reduce it. Maybe they decide they only need 50000 whatever it is. And maybe they want to narrow the scope of what they're asking for. Um, this was more of a last-minute piece that was added on, so I don't have the exact calculation on the tax rate, but based on the two numbers above, I would speculate it would be somewhere around $0.17 cents per thousand would be my best guess. Um, as far as this goes, one of the problems that came up, and this has happened year after year, is net school spending. Net school spending, for the first time in many, many years, we are meeting with the pile that is consistent of Norris School, Smith Vocational, Charter School, School Choice, and what we have is indirect cost. It's the first time in many years that we've actually hit where we need to be, and we're actually over. We're only over by $3,900, but we're over for the first time. The problem, as we alluded to earlier, was the fact that Smith Vocational went up another $130,000, give or take, from last year, which essentially is taking that 130 that we would normally put into Norris School and spending it over in Smith. Smith numbers don't come back finalized until October. As of right now, it's 
a lot unlike the process for college admissions. If you're going to college, you need to let folks know by May whether you're in or you're out. Unfortunately, with the vocational schools, the way the state law is currently set up, people don't have, students don't have to say, I'm in or I'm out by the time they get to the month of May. They don't have to say till October, which means we're sitting there looking at the money going, okay, well, we think it's not going to get spent, but we can't do a thing with it until that point. Last year, we started a different direction, which I think was helpful, which was when we found out the funds weren't going to be utilized, we went back and we allocated those monies to go over to Nora School. And it did help us maintain being close to net school spending, but we weren't there. This year, if this happens and we have the 120000 that's passed, say it's passed at a prop two and a half, then theoretically, if Smith comes in lower, we wouldn't be required to go back and transfer that funds over to Nora School because we'd already be meeting net school spending. But it would be up to the town to decide, do we want to just meet it or do we want to go over? And how much do we want to go over? So this is, this is just a step in that direction. And I think it's continued frustration at the school because theoretically, all things being equal to last year, they would have been fine. They would have had 120 extra thousand dollars, and they would have been in good place with everything going up in cost. But Smith Vocational came in too high. Thank you, Heather. As Heather, our town administrator, pointed out, um, the school could, could keep that 120, 100,000, 120, 100, yeah, or, or lower it, but they can't increase it. Uh, they don't have the option to increase. And, and when we post a warrant, it's to warn the inhabitants of what we're going to talk about, uh, old Colonial Day language. And essentially, there are people, um, uh, 120,000, 100,000, I could stay at home. But gee, if it's going to be um, 150,000, I'm, I'm going to come. I'm going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to vote that down, or I want to weigh in on it. And so that's, that's uh, part, of the, part of the process. So we're now getting into uh, uh, two uh, debt exclusion articles to see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of $198,875 or any other amount to pay costs of purchasing a fuel station and generator for the highway department, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, to determine whether this amount shall be raised by borrowing or otherwise, and if by borrowing only to the extent that the town shall have approved the proposition two and a half debt exclusion with respect to such borrowing. Do I want to wait until he's done with both of them? Possibly? He likes to do one at a time. All right. <laughs> um, Margaret Larson, Nine David, and also the clerk for the Capital Improvement Committee. Um, after a number of years on hiatus, the Capital Improvement Committee reformed this year um, because we're required to have such a committee. Uh, the total available funds given to us was 223613 and we solicited uh, requests from um, a number of different departments and organizations in town, including highway, library, police, fire, school, the Council on Aging, and the uh, Public <coughs> Safety Committee. So given the fact that we were working with $223,000 and we knew that we wanted to leave some in reserve, um, we came up against some issues, particularly with the uh, fuel station and generator, that $198,000 would in fact take most of our budget. So that is why we recommended to the Finance Committee that that um, be put up for debt exclusion. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Tammy Walunas, 298. Don't we already have a generator at the uh, fire station? Who can answer that? So generators are always an interesting question, Mrs. Walunas. If you recall earlier, I alluded to the fact that we have four XP computers. Mm -hmm. Think of that as the same years on a lot of our generators. So they're well past their lifespan. Some of them, you know, it's like anything else. We try to make it go as long as we possibly can. Um, one of our best operating generators right now is the very large one we have over at the police station so that they can maintain mm -hmm. emergency operations. But right now, we're, we have an older generator being jerry-rigged over at the highway garage so that in the event that they do lose power, 
they can hook it up, but it's not an updated generator. It's many, many, many years old. You know, we don't really know what the performance is going to be on that generator should we need it. Okay. And we're just trying to get by. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. I did not read the note because I didn't turn the page. Uh, there is a note for this article. The article has been placed on the warrant by the Capital Improvement Committee. This article will allow for the replacement of the current underground storage tanks that cannot be utilized due to a crack in the tank to be replaced with above ground storage t tanks, once again allowing town to have its own fuel station and backup power to run said station. This article carries with it an, an approximate five cents per thousand increase in the tax rate for 10 years. Debt exclusion goes for a period of time until the debt's taken care of and two and a half uh, is forever. Any questions on the tank? Hearing none, we'll proceed. Um, e uh, from this article, debt exclusion, to see if the town will vote to appropriate 10,800, oh, 10 million. Oh, hello, we're in the big one. I, you had a second one. Which one are you going to speak yeah, on? Yeah. Oh, you're going to speak on that one. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. I was waiting two from the capital improvement, so you got a lot more zeros there. Um, $10,800,000 or any other amount to pay cost of designing, constructing, originally equipping and furnishing a new public safety complex, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto to determine whether this amount shall be raised by borrowing or otherwise, and if by a borrowing, only to the extent that the town shall have approved a proposition two and a half debt exclusion with respect to such borrowing. Note, the article has been placed on a warrant by the Capital Improvement Committee. If this article, along with a ballot question at a town meeting passes, the tax rate change will be approximately slightly over a dollar per thousand for 20 years. Um, so again, clearly this $10,800,000 far exceeded our budget. Um, <laughs> one of the um, processes that we used in order to make our decision um, was we used a rating sheet that was adapted by the Metropolitan Council of the Twin Cities in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and uh, similar versions are used elsewhere in the state. Um, so we ranked each one of these requests on a um, scale of 1 to 55, and the um, public safety complex and actually the fuel station generator both received ratings of 45 out of 55, which were the highest ratings that um, we came up with in our process. Thank you. You're welcome. Questions? Charlie, would you like to say more on this? <laughs> say this in my sleep at this point. Uh, the selectmen established a committee back in oh, 2011 to look at our fire and police complexes, our dispatch area, our emergency management area, and make a determination of needs. And we have went through this whole process. Uh, we finally established that we needed to do something because our facilities are in deplorable state of affairs to be very blunt. We absolutely have to address this. Uh, we've hired companies to take and do our preliminary designs and, and feasibility, and that's the estimates we've come up with is $10,800,000. Uh, one has to look at this as if, well, let's say the average home is going to increase your taxes by, we'll say, $250 a year. So you're buying into this complex for $250 a year. But it's enhancing your police department, it's enhancing your fire department, your dispatch, your emergency services. It's even going to actually give us another meeting room that will be available as things go along. It's a must do. Uh, we need to pass this at town meeting. We need to pass this at the, our election. Thank you, Charlie. Um, and by the way, the previous uh, article on this one needs a two-thirds majority for passage. Yes, sir. Uh, the price tag on this, you said, is close to $11 million. Is that correct? Yes. Is there any state grants that are in support of this? Or? John, you're not going to like what I'm going to say. <laughs> well, try me. The income level of the average home in this town 
exceeds our eligibility for any grant money. Well said. But the price tag, as I say it, is, you know, are you building the, the Taj Mahal here or? Absolutely the not. Fire department and the police department? You do realize that I also grew up in this town and that I pay taxes. I don't know what that's got to do with the Taj Mahal here. It, it has a lot to do with it because I pay taxes also. So do I. So and you're asking for a $250 tax increase that will be permanent for each home in the town. Is that what you're saying? For the next 20 years. Now. For, for 20 years. Yes, it's a debt exclusion, not a two and a half override. Two and a half override would be forever, but the debt exclusion would be until the debt is paid and they're, they're planning on 20 years. Now, thank you, Robert. I forgot the difference between a debt exclusion and a proposition override. It's been some time since I touched upon these subjects. But I'm looking at the $11 million bill, and uh, the price tag to me is quite high. I'm not And of course, that. this is susceptible to amendment. You know that. Oh, sure. every, every article is except the amendment. Do you have any specific information or questions uh, uh, on information? This will be debated. This will be discussed. This may be amended as any article, but this is an opportunity to, to ask questions and get information and uh, really want, wanting to um, banter with opinion. Uh, Michael. I thought the Jimmy's getting positioned for the next article. No. <laughs> okay. Well, that too. All right. Um, All of the above. I'm Virginia A. Hart. Um, Chair of the CPA. Yes, <laughs> among other things. Um, I have heard rumors that some of our other debt exclusions are coming to an end. And this would mean that those were coming off of the tax bill. Is that correct? That it is correct, and Charlie has a printout or, or summary of that. You see, part of this, when we go and we say, okay, $11 million just to say the number, the first year we're doing architectural and engineering designing, we're not spending $11 million. We're spending probably close to six or 700000 so that first year, the actual debt is only on that amount of money. In the meantime, we have other debt that's being retired. So even though we're looking at this coming down, the other part to this is the town being flugal and trying to make sure we don't have any other major capital projects. If you were to look at the town from a historical point of view, you will see that we built libraries, we built schools, we move through a process of what becomes the next priority that we need to focus on. This complex has now become the next priority. After this complex is built, you give it 10 years, you're going to see another major something or other being proposed. That's normal. That's what we do with this. Thank you, Charlie. Michael? <clears throat> Mike Bueller, 88 High. And I don't, I'm at a place where I don't know enough to know whether this is a, relatively speaking, a Taj Mahal or a Hubble. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking out of pure ignorance. Is <laughs> it possible here to give a sense of the range of options that were examined, that, you know, which discussion led to a kind of project that was going to cost the town $10.8 million? Well, the first part of this issue is the elevation requirements and the driveways. That plays into it then the septic and sewage disposal plays into it. Then the next thing, you're obviously the other utilities coming into it. Then you need to start establishing the square footage requirements for a community this size as to how large the fire station needs to be. Not only the apparatus areas, but also the chief's office, the, everything else that's tied into that, locker rooms, bunk rooms, showers, that. Then you do the same calculation for your police department. And then there are standards, like you have state standards relative to lockups and jails and that. You obviously have your federal, your plumbing codes and your fire codes that actually Im impact this building too. All this is put together as a general a proposal. That's where this is at. And then this number 
is basically an approximation based on other communities' expenses and projected by square footage as to what these other projects would cost on today's dollars, or actually next year's dollars. Now it's entirely possible, and I hope, that this gets appropriated, but when we go out for design and engineering and we go out to bids, the bids could be less. So if the bids came in, let's say hypothetically at nine million, then the debt load on the town would be nine million, not 11. But there has to be a ceiling, and that's what the ceiling is all about. Does that sort of give you a feel as to what, where we went and why? So if I'm understanding you correctly, because of, I'm just going to no, use fine. shorthand and say state regulations, and that's just a shorthand for a whole bunch of rules and regulations yeah. that the process is subject to. Because of that, there's actually, and because of the, the bare facts of the site we're dealing with, there is at least relatively speaking not that much wriggle room. There is that is, like, this couldn't have been designed as a million dollar project or a five million dollar project. It was going to come in at some big nut in the zip code of ten point eight million dollars. Is this, that what I'm hearing? That's what you're hearing. This building has to be structurally sound and protected because it's supposed to be survivable because it's our emergency facility. Okay, thank you. If thank I you, can Michael. just add two things. Um, number one, the two tax, two items coming off the tax rolls over the years, <clears throat> approximately 2017 North, North School roof will come off. That's a couple hundred thousand right now. And the next one is the Hampshire Regional Debt, which I believe is in slightly over $300,000, and that comes off in 2021. Also, if you're looking for more information on the public safety complex, any of the presentations, or even the video that has been shown, please go to the town's website, and you will be able to find it there. They have put in a lot of time, work, and energy into providing these pieces of information. You'll also see around town, including in Town Hall, the picture of the less than Taj Mahal. Um, floor plans of what you're looking at, but essentially you get a better idea of what the basic thought process is for the layout. The last concern with putting this project off any time longer than this annual town meeting was the fact that like anything else, there's inflation. So the longer you wait for a project, the higher the costs are going to be. Not only that, but right now our interest rates are relatively low. They're not going to stay low for long. They're bouncing back up. So the longer we wait on this, the higher we're going to get stuck with interest rates. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Heather. Any other questions? Is your intent to make a presentation, have handouts at the annual? At this point in time, it was to put up the board as people entered. Okay. Uh, wasn't looking so much to do handouts and stuff because I don't need, I don't see the need to flood people with it at the town meeting. I'm hoping that they go and watch the videos and watch the PowerPoints on the website so that they are knowledgeable of this. It's interesting because we have posted a, an email site that people can email us, as well as my home phone number is actually posted on the boards. And people will catch me on the side to talk, but I'm not getting anybody calling up to ask anything, any specifics. I think they're getting a lot out of the PowerPoint. My, my thought was that uh, when page with the, uh, when the other debt exclusions will be paid, and how much per thousand each will affect each year. That might be something that uh, financial information that might be nice to, to, to pass out. Well, that would be something that if Heather could glean together for the Board of Selectmen, that would be very helpful. But that's going to deal with all the projects, not just. Yeah, you're correct. Am I correctly here? We got John, I need, you to, I need you at the mic. Sorry. Hearing correctly here that uh, when the current debt exclusions are paid off, that it's very near. Is that what you're saying? Within a year, uh, two years. Well, so the, the first so one is in 2017. If, if you're talking maybe two or three years, maybe this can be delayed for two or three years, and probably at a higher cost. I, I think the problem, John, is the same thing Charlie alluded to is this isn't going to be the only project we need to do. This project may work for the next 10 years and then we're going to have to replace the roof over at the library. And at some point in the next future of 
within 20 years, probably within 10, we're going to need to do something with the highway garage. We, you know, so we, yeah. we, being the town as a whole, need to do something because you can't have people working in a building that's collapsing around them. And like anything else, like the XP computers, you have to continually upgrade things or they're no good to you. Thank you. And not the royal we, we the people. <laughs> Michael. Just point of process. It, can I make a suggestion in this form? Yes. Uh, if I may be so bold. Uh, what, you, I'm sure you remember that in November 2012, we had a couple of articles related to the Greenway uh, on the warrant for annual town meeting. And what, you may remember at that time we held a public information session that evening. And, you know, immediate, at 6 o'clock, I think it was, immediately before town meeting, and the attendance was overwhelming. I don't remember if it was 100 or 200 people, but um, I think people found it very helpful, and it was certainly a, a venue that was heavily used. So I would appreciate it, speaking for myself and I think for my wife, I think we would appreciate it if there was some kind of session like that before the meeting. And given the magnitude of the issue, I, I'm pretty sure it will be well attended. I remember that meeting very well. I had, a, I, had a, I, had a, I had to get that microphone away from the, from the meeting to start the annual. The, um, be, before Charlie asked that, um, there being a session, um, it would, it would it be need to be in the same room, but it could be off from the side because the TV cameras need to be set up and, and a lot of work that went into fear, plus the selectmen are meeting that particular evening, and so I'm not sure if they're going to meet in the library or they're going to meet on the floor. We generally meet in the library. Okay, fine. And so, question, suggestion? We I use the gym, for the Repeat? information session. We use the gymnasium. Yeah. So yes. it wasn't where town meet, it wasn't the cafeteria. Oh, it, that's right. It a large I'm thinking of another, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of another session where it was, thank you. I can certainly bring this in front of the committee, the building committee, to do this. I have no problem with it. I actually like the idea, and it just never occurred to us. So let me uh, see what we can do. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you, Charlie. Thank, thank you, Michael. Yeah, I'm going to clarify something here. Now, if this particular issue passes at town meeting, then it goes to a vote for the entire town. Is that correct? He goes to a special election, okay. correct. Okay, okay. Yes. Um, I will announce now, okay. okay. I will announce now, I've announced in a select board meeting, um, because of an annual that we had recently, we had uh, quite a large number uh, of people, over 500, and there were two rooms, and um, I can't be in two places at the same time. Uh, we did all gather together and had a group hug for the final vote. So I will introduce, perhaps for the first time in the history of the town, what's called the deputy moderator. I will announce the name. I'll explain um, my reason for this. And essentially, it's for that individual to assist me to be in another room, that needing to be the case, to monitor the vote, to report the vote back to me. and. For any other strange reason, I win the lotto and I'm swept out of town to take over the meeting and to finalize it. <laughs> that's the best I could do. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll work on it. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's what's going to happen. Okay. We're going to move on. Uh, Article 13, community preservation. Oh, and, and the town would need to vote yay or nay in majority. Report of Community Preservation Committee to see if the town will hear and act pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 4. 44B on the report of the Community Preservation Committee for the fiscal year 2016 Community Preservation Budget and to appropriate or reserve from the Community Preservation Fund a sum of money in the amounts recommended by the CPC for committee administrative expenses, community preservation projects, and other necessary and proper expenses in fiscal year beginning July 1, 2015 including debt service for any approved community preservation projects 
with each item to be considered a separate appropriation. And it goes on to talk about reserves with, with the sum to be determined in a motion for the town meeting uh, for historic resource reserve, resources reserve, community housing reserve, open space reserve, and for budgeted reserve. Um, and Virginia. I was just going to add on this piece. This is something we were required to put on last year by town council. Um, I tried to get away without it this year because the auditors and also DOR said we didn't need it, but town council advised against getting rid of it. So it's, it's back on. <laughs> All this is is taking our funds <clears throat> and dividing them up as required by the law, which is 10% for historical resources. Now more can be spent there, but 10% of the resources, the revenue that comes in on our tax, a surcharge on our taxes, and from the state grant, 10% uh, must go into each of these. Historic resources, community housing, open space, and that can be open space slash recreation now. The rest goes into the budgeted reserve and can be used in any one of those spaces or divided up as, you know, the need be. Uh, the one, if you look at our resources, <laughs> the one that has most of their 10% since we began in the year 2000 is the housing. Um, it's been a very difficult item to deal with. Um, it's providing affordable housing, and be careful, it's affordable, it's not low income, um, which means if you're at 100% of the average in town, you're in affordable. Um, that, we just don't have a lot of opportunities here mm -hmm. with that. So if you look at ours, we've got quite a bit of money in that pot, but the Housing Authority is looking to try to find new ways to do this. But this has been on every year except last year. <laughs> and uh, it's routine. Most and, you, and you have the figures at the meeting. I hope which, so. Which, okay. <laughs> Okay. It's not me that does them, but uh, I would hope so. I also want to just hop up to the line above. I want to reassure you that we have no debt service mm -hmm. items right now. Thank you. <laughs> um, they, they, and the next one, uh, B, to transfer funds undesignated. To save the town will vote to transfer the amount of $18,752.89 to fund the completion of an additional project for Labrie Fields, and some shall be taken from the Community Preservation Surcharges Undesignated account. That has been deemed to be passed over at the meeting, and we will uh, proceed on to C, transfer of funds undesignated. To save the town, we'll vote to transfer the amount of $10,000 to fund the operating expenses of the Community Preservation Commission, and some shall be taken from the Community Preservation Surcharge Undesignated account. Questions? And that's your operating? That's operating. the operating, and if we don't spend it in a year, it goes back in. And by the way, that's the only amount of funds that our committee is responsible for. Once a grant is made, and they're grants to different, like historical commission or, um, you know, to recreational activities, so the Parks Commission might be doing it. That's their problem. They use it. We only can spend that 10000 <laughs> Thank you, Virginia. Questions? D. Uh, again, these will be broken up into uh, their separate articles. D, transfer of funds, historical preservation account. C, if the town will vote to transfer the amount of $5,000 to the veteran's grave officer to be used to fund the purchase of a 
of 10 flat markers for the veterans' graves. Said some shall be taken from the Community Preservation Surcharges Historical Preservation Account. This one and the next one are work that uh, Mr. Richard Frary has been working on as the uh, veterans' grave officer. Um, he's did a lot of research and was the driving force behind the plaques that we now have out there. Um, up until about four or five years ago, you could, the town, could say, we have so many veterans' graves, and a lot of the gravestones are weathering and can't be cared for. And they could get little bronze plaques from the uh, Veterans Administration. Well, they now have come up with the idea that only a direct descendant of that veteran can ask for it. So, okay, go back and find our revolutionary veterans' direct descendants. And so now we, uh, the town is paying for these uh, so that they may be put in. And he's, this is, these are ongoing, ongoing projects because um, he doesn't want to stockpile a whole bunch of these over at the town barns or something. He gets the number each year that one of his helpers can help him get them in. Thank you. And the uh, plaques that Virginia Ehart was referring to are the uh, war, mo war memorials outside yes. on, on the front lawn of, of the town hall. E, the transfer of funds historical preservation account. To see if the town will vote to transfer the amount of $1,500 to the veterans grave officer to be used to fund the restoration of Revolutionary War and Civil War veterans monuments, said some shall be taken from the Community Preservation Surcharges Historical Preservation Account. And that's what you had already referred to. He's going on with this project also. Please. Well, you got to stand up and share the mic because we can't hear you at home. Uh, how much do you have in this community preservation account? Oh, Are you expending it all, or no? <laughs> well, I know needs it. well, we can't, can't do used. that. <laughs> the <laughs> the nice state try. would nice try, say, <laughs> "No, no, no." They already told us no on one thing when we were trying to help the safety complex. I got my wrist straps. My wrist slapped pretty good. F, transfer of funds, historical preservation account. Save the town will vote to transfer the amount of $10,500 to the Cemetery Commission to be used to fund the restoration of the Judd Memorials in the Center Cemetery. Said sum shall be taken from the Community Preservation Surcharges Historical Preservation Account. If you've Wandered through the cemetery, if you walk in from College Highway, go to the far left and go down, you will find the Judd Memorials. This was the first, the town's first minister, Jonathan Judd Sr., and his wife, I love her name, it sure says what women were in the past, or supposed to be in the past, Silence, Judd. <laughs> um, they, they were beautiful at one time. They're like tables. Beautiful carving. The top of them had the writing on it. Now we know what's on those mainly do because a, uh, a woman in, I think, the 1930s copied a lot of them, and then Dick Frary and his twin daughters, when they were in high school, went down and rechecked all of that. We know what's on them, but they can't be restored that way. So they, what the Cemetery Commission would like to do is to get plaques that bronze plaques that say what 
were on those gravestones and then do restoration which will at least save the stones but take a walk down there sometime and see thank you and and to be clear i am on the cemetery commission and i serve the town as the superintendent of our three cemeteries transfer of funds historical preservation account See, the town will vote to transfer the amount of $11,000 to the Board of Selectmen to be used to fund the installation of automatic doors, door openers, for the double set of external doors for the Council on Aging Doors and for the main entrance door to Town Hall to meet accessibility standards for the Town Hall, the old Larrabee building, and some shall be taken from the Committee Preservation Surcharge Historical Preservation Account. Yeah, I was invited to go to the Capital Improvements Committee. <laughs> they were hopeful <laughs> that we could do some things. Well, their, the lowest priced one on their list was the only one we can do. Because this is a historic building, community preservation funds may be used for accessibility. And in fact, actually, it was community preservation funds that uh, helped with the elevator and with the handicapped bathrooms uh, at when the building was being done over. These doors out here are not accessible. Try getting in the senior center with a, you know, the women's club meets there, they have a potluck every so often and here's Virginia standing out there with her casserole with a snowbank, trying to pull the door open, get around that snowbank and get in. I didn't need to be told <laughs> we need to do something about those, those doors. Um, they, this will now be doors that open with the, the push button. Um, there'll be big enough that if you're in a wheelchair, you can get in. Oh. <clears throat> we have a number of people. I haven't seen a lot of wheelchairs, but I've seen an awful lot of people come in, in with walkers during election time. And I'm not sure how they get in that door. I think it's sad that we have a sign on it that says, ring the bell for help. Anyway, we're, we're going to try to help get rid of that. <laughs> Thank you, Virginia. Yeah. Any questions? John wants to know what kind of casserole you carry into those meetings. <laughs> I'm only kidding, I'm only kidding. Uh, H, transfer of funds, open space account. This saves the town will vote to transfer the amount of $1,000 to the Conservation Commission to be used to fund signs for the Zipta Conservation Area Trail. Said sums shall be taken from the Community Preservation Surcharges Open Space Account. It's on Glendale Road, about 90 odd acres. The Conservation Commission has been working um, to upgrade the, the pieces of property that they hold and um, they have created a very nice brochure that speaks of the, the Zipka farm. And everything's been done on it except the signs. And in fact, uh, they didn't include signs in a proposal a few years ago for that property. And money was left over and they wanted to use it for signs. And I had to be the heavy and say, you didn't put it on the article. So I don't think you can use it. So they're just trying to finish that project. Thank you, and, and thank you, Virginia. And the Zipta property was purchased uh, uh, multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars with the self-help grant from the Commonwealth. Thank you very much. Article 4, Revolving Funds. Note, the following articles pertain to revolving funds. Unless specified elsewhere in state statutes, departmental revolving funds shall be authorized under Chapter 44 
uh, Section 53E and a half of the Massachusetts General Laws. Each fund must be reauthorized each year at annual town meeting, and a limit on the total amount that may be spent from each fund must be established at that time. The aggregate of all revolving funds may not exceed 10 percent of the amount raised by taxation by the city or town in the most recent fiscal year, and no more than 1 percent of the amount re raised by taxation be administered by a single fund. And the first one, A, creation of revolving account tax title. To see if the town will vote to accept the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 60, Section 15B, Chapter 390 of the Acts of 2014, to establish a tax title revolving fund for the treasurer collector for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2015, with specific receipts with the maximum amount that may be spent being $10,000. So this is the revolving account tax title that we were talking about prior in Article 4. Article 4, the town is to vote in the acceptance of the Mass General Law, and this, which is Article 14A, actually allows the town to create said revolving account. Thank you, Heather. Any questions? B, creation of revolving account park commission. The city of the town will vote pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section uh, 53, E and a half, to authorize the operation of revolving fund for park commission for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2015, with specific receipts from usage fees collected to be spent by the park commission for the purpose of maintaining town parks with the maximum amount that may be spent being $10,000. So previous Board of Selectmen meeting, those who may have watched had actually seen Mark Reed, Jeff Swanson, Mrs. Walunas, and others speaking about the use of the new field over, which is the Labrie field. Um, one of the conversations they had was this year being the first year that since they're going to use it, they'd like to charge user fees for the park to a certain extent in order to help maintain the, that park as well as other parks as we move forward. Um, this revolving account was requested to the Board of Selectmen by the Park Commission in order to actually provide a form to be able to collect those fees and then utilize them for the maintenance of the park. Thank you, Heather. Questions? Creation Revolving Account Planning Board. To see if the town will vote pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half, E half, to authorize the operation of a revolving fund for planning board to utilize for a consultant charges for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2015 with specific receipts with the maximum amount that may be spent being $15,000. The planning board currently already has a revolving account for administrative fees which is only a couple thousand dollars and you'll see that later on in the subsection D. Uh, this account was created at the request of the plan planning board for the purpose of being able to take in funds for consulting. So what had happened was they had a long-standing member, John Furman, who was phenomenal and he was the leader of the board and he had a lot of background and knowledge that he was able to bring and also he was able to do a lot of the work that the planning board needed. When John departed the board, the problem became that the other members didn't have as much expertise in certain areas and they felt more comfortable relying on an outside agency such as PVPC, Planning Pioneer Planning, uh, this isn't working for me tonight, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Commission. This is way past my comprehension hour. Um, that being the case, this revolving account simply allows whatever charges that are paid from the applicant to go into this account and then the cost to go over to our bill from PVPC. It's just a pass-through, but we have to have a catcher for that pass-through. Thank you, Heather. Heather and I work well together. I send her emails out at midnight and uh, when she's sleeping, and she sends me answers, answers promptly at 8.30 in the morning when I'm sleeping, so <laughs> thank you. Appropriation revolving FY16. Save the town will vote pursuant to provisions of section 53 and a half of chapter 44 of Mass General Laws to authorize the operation of revolving funds for certain town departments for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2015 with specific receipts credited to each fund the purpose for which each fund may be 
may be spent and the maximum that may be spent from each fund for the fiscal year as follows. And there's a whole list. Um, uh, plumbing inspection, 15,000. Electrical inspection, 15,000. Planning board, 10,000. Zoning board of appeals, 3,000. Uh, council and aging van, 20,000. Dog licensing and control, 8,000. Weights and measures, 3,000. So these are all the purposes of the previous articles, so 14 A, B, and C, are to create revolving, a fund, revolving funds. Once they're created, they show up in this chart later on at every subsequent annual town meeting. Unless initially stated when the fund is set up, all funds simply, whatever goes in, comes out, essentially. Um, there's one exception on this list, and that's weights and measures, the way it was voted for is that the town can collect up to $3,000 for the fees and whatever's <laughs> left at the end of the year that we haven't paid out in the bill to the state who does our weights and measures inspections rolls over to the town. So for instance, this year, once everything rolls over, we'll have $500 income from the weights and measures process. Thank you, Heather. Comments, questions? Article 15. Transfer water department retain earnings FY16 to see if the town will vote to transfer from water department retain earnings the sum of $75,000 for the research and development of a water system master plan note the purpose of this transfer is to comply with the January 2015 regulations of the Department of Environmental Protection sanitary survey requirements regarding Mass General Law Chapter 111-160. The current balance of water department retained earnings is $215,607. It's a water enterprise fund. Unfortunately, I don't have any additional information than what's noted at this time. Okay, we, 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 <laughs> we, we trust there will be a representative at the meeting. Article 16, Appropriation Ambulance Stabilization Fund. To see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of $25,000 from the ambulance fees account to the Ambulance Stabilization Fund. Cars two-thirds vote. Note, in fiscal FY15, the, ambulances, the ambulance stabilization was created for the sole purpose of purchasing a new ambulance fund in the future. New amb Do we need that fund in there? No, all right, gotta take that word out. I caught it. Um, usually I don't. The funds for this article would come from ambulance receipts reserved for appropriation. Current balance is $179,021. The current balance in the ambulance stabilization fund is $25,000. So we already referenced this earlier when we were talking about transferring $75,000 to ambulance and related expenses. It's all coming from the same account which we generally refer to as ambulance receipts instead of that very long line that tends to get confusing as we speak of it. Um, so 75, remember two seconds ago Robert, or the moderator had said there's a current balance of $179,000 and some change in that account and that's as of April 2015 receipts. It will be higher potentially by next month. Um, I don't imagine by a huge amount but whatever hasn't been entered yet. And from that 179000 the first article you saw earlier was to take 75000 which essentially leaves approximately 104000 and some change. <laughs> and then this article would take an additional 25000 which would leave you with approximately 79000 give or take, um, in the ambulance receipts fund for the current time being. And again, this is for $25,000 to put towards ambulance stabilization. So eventually we can buy an ambulance. Thank you, Heather. I think Charlie's raising his hand. Charlie. Chief, what do you, what's the new ambulance go for now? Uh, I, I, I mean a ballpark figure, because if we're just dropping 25000 a year, I'm trying to figure out how many years it's going to take to. Yeah, I, I really want to research to give you a good number on that. I mean, you can certainly spend $150,000 and probably more, and that's really shooting from the hip. And so uh, I, I almost hate to throw a number out. I'd rather have a solid number for you. Um, they're, not, they're not cheap. Um, I know that uh, initially when the accounts were set up, uh, the, we didn't have the full-time staffing. Um, 
and so there was always money to buy an ambulance. Uh, one thing that I've done as I came in is I've tried to put all the trucks onto a, a replacement schedule, so we're not replacing ambulances every couple years, but we're actually getting 10 years to 15 years out of ambulances before we, we replace them. So um, this addresses our need to replace the ambulance. The costs are going to vary as to when you get them, and I'd, I'd need a I'd want to get a better number before I present them. I'm not holding you to it. I'm yeah, I know, I know. It, but it, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, I but, mean, but you're saying 10 years. I know it's not 10 years because the ambulances are what three, four years. Old. Yeah. The the problem is that they're 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 just a year apart. So, yeah, yeah. And 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 the ideal schedule, if you go on a 15 year replacement schedule, is you replace an ambulance every seven and a half years. Right. So. And that's why if you do 25000 a year, it's about $200,000. Kind of gets us onto that schedule. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Charlie. The moderator doesn't vote at a town meeting. Everyone else votes. They vote as a citizen without strict uh, allegiance, uh, adherence to how they may have vote, voted uh, prior to a town meeting. When there is a tie, uh, any moderator worth their salt uh, is expected to break that tie with the vote. The other opportunity a moderator uh, can have to vote is when an article uh, is separated by the I's and A's by one vote. Uh, the moderator uh, is expected to have opinions, not necessarily voice them in public, but moderators are allowed to create a tie, therefore defeating an article. So those are the two concepts uh, that a moderator can vote. Article 17, stabilization. Yes, sir. Can I include a two-thirds vote, too? You can Repeat. A two-thirds vote, too? Whatever it is, whatever the vote count is, if there's, a, if, there's, if there's a vote difference, the moderator okay. can. So a moderator can defeat a 50-50 or two-thirds if that particular moderator in another town chooses to do that. Article 17, Stabilization Funds. Note, the following articles have been submitted by the Capital Improvement Committee. The following articles are requests for transfers to for, f slash from a stabilization fund for FY16. All stabilization transfers, both in and out of the stabilization account, require a two-thirds vote, and the moderator will divide the question, and we will discuss and, and vote on each one um, separately. Yes? Oh, I was going to talk after you. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, I'll read A then. Thank you. Uh, a, transfer capital stabilization fund. To see if the town will vote to transfer $61,551 to the Highway Department to fund the purchase of a 2015 Ford F450 uh, truck. Said sum shall be taken from the capitalization fund. I just wanted to speak a little bit more about um, our process. Uh, so once we received the requests from each of these departments, we invited them to come speak with us and provide us with the most up-to-date quotes that they could and uh, we asked them to justify their requests and then once we'd met with all of the departments we then went through the ranking process that I referred to earlier um, which included things like is this a replacement is um, will this reduce expenses will this increase expenses um, is it revenue neutral uh, will it add revenue those were the things that we went through and what we noticed as we went through there were probably 10, 11, 12 requests um, that some kind of rose to the top and others dropped off. Um, and so in the end, uh, what you're looking at, particularly starting with the highway, is um, something that we ended up ranking fairly high, 42 out of 55, um, because of the vehicle they're currently working with is on its last legs. Thank you. Any questions on that particular one? Seeing none, stay close. Um, <laughs> B. Uh, to save the town will vote to transfer the sum of $47,000 to the library for the purchase of a heating and cooling system and related costs. Said sum shall be taken from the capital stabilization fund. Uh, so this was an example where the Capital Improvement Committee um, tried to add value to the process. The library approached us with a three-year plan 
and we recommended to them that they resubmit an estimate uh, where we could uh, give them all the money so that they could accomplish their goals for this new heating and cooling system in one year because um, we were concerned about some band-aids being put on over the next couple years and we thought we'd achieve some economies of scale by um, doing it within one year. Thank you. Any questions? Comments? C. Uh, transfer capitalization, uh, uh, capital stabilization fund. The city of the town will vote to transfer the sum of $44,623 to the police department for the purchase of a new cruiser with cameras and said sum shall be taken from the capital stabilization fund. Chief, do you wanna? Oh, sorry, wrong one. <laughs> I should have you're next. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong line item. Um, teamwork, teamwork. So again, I think that we uh, were looking at this. They had actually requested a, a cruiser to replace um, some existing cruiser, or they're adding two, two, existing, two existing, cruisers existing cruisers need to be replaced. So we're looking at replacing one in this year and then another in a subsequent year. That's the hope. That is the hope. Yes, um, and they also requested a camera and we suggested that they enclose that with this cruiser and we were able to get a, a better quotation based on that. The camera was something they were packaging for next year. Right. But we felt if you're getting a new police car this year, you might as well get it fully equipped this year. Right. The article That's has it. camera and, and S and brackets uh, implying plural, so will the motion be one camera or more than one uh, camera? Well, I think that they're looking at what the cost is of doing that. And so in all cases, this is what we're looking at is hopefully the, the maximum that we are um, allocating for these. Yeah. I understand. A forward camera and a rear camera. Okay. Correct. All right, that's covered then. That cameras, yes. plural. Thank you, Charlie. Any questions? Huh? D. Uh, to see if the town will vote, and all of these uh, that we're talking about, stabilization funds requires a two-thirds vote for passage. And when we do two-thirds, I will say all in favor say aye and aye. Opposed, I hear one nay. Then we do the counters because we have to, by law, give the exact number, and it can't be by ear. So when it's unanimous, we don't count. When it isn't, we count. To see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of $9,000 to the fire department for the purchase of firefighter turnout gear. Said sum shall be taken for the capital stabilization fund. Now I'll turn it to <laughs> <laughs> My eyes are deceiving me. Yeah. Uh, this was tough just because we had a, a number of things that we uh, need in the fire department. Uh, one of them certainly was a 31-year-old brush truck that uh, doesn't always like to start. Um, but I was posed the question of, uh, the brush truck or gear. Uh, gear is really uh, what my guys need when they go into a fire. Um, most important to me is keeping my guys safe. Um, so we put the $9,000 for gear forward. Thank you, Chief. Questions? Seeing none. Article E, last one. Or uh, subsection E, uh, last one. Transfer uh, capital stabilization fund. The Save the Town will vote to transfer the sum of $24,000 to Norris School for an updated phone system. Said sum shall be taken from capital stabilization fund. So the purpose of the new phone system is to allow teachers in the classrooms to call directly out to 911 in the case of an emergency. So at this point, what happens if they need to call, they have to be transferred to uh, the main office and then the emergency call is placed from there. So clearly this is something um, that we needed to address. And there, they, um, the school did look into grants and there were no grants available and so that's where we came in. Um, and since this is the last one, I also want to say that as part of our committee decision, we wanted to leave about 20% if we could in our fund for emergencies, um, and we were able to leave about 17% this year, $37,439. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I indicated to Paul Fish, our, our TV camera guy from East Hampton Media, that we would end by 9 o'clock, and I've we pulled it off. <laughs> I, I, I am humbled. Uh, by my colleagues, um, uh, Selectwoman Jacqueline Sears, uh, Selectman newly elected Charlie Kanicki, 
and tell my moderator Heather, who we would not. Tell moderator. I'm sorry. I was I said, you're you're you're, you're so taking nice. over the meeting. We'll switch jobs. <laughs> Town administrator Heather, who who wow, thank you. Well done. Well done. I, I'm. Mr. Very Moderator, thrilled. before you conclude tonight, can you just, I don't know if you covered this at the very beginning when I was out of the room, but even if you did, if you can reiterate, just for anyone who's new to town meeting, what the procedures are for actually walking into the room. A lot of folks don't realize they need to stand in line, and sometimes parking gets a little overwhelming. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, that one meeting where we had over 500, I walked the halls and ensured everyone that, not to panic, we would not start the meeting at 7. I don't know if we started at 725, but come early, park, uh, walk safely, and you need to uh, present yourself and give your address, and they sign you in, give you a card, and whatever information um, is available, um, and then you sit down and wait until the meeting starts. The handouts need to be presented to the town clerk noon of uh, May 18th, noon before the day of the town meeting. And it can be done anonymously according to the laws of the Commonwealth, and I'm cool with that. But um, I do like to see what's there. I don't want surprises, and um, uh, I believe that's fair uh, to everyone. So there will be a line. This is an annual. Uh, the earlier you come, sit down, get to, get to know some of your neighbors, get a good seat. Um, None of the cheap seats in the back, uh, but but there is a process, and then we 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 do a pledge of allegiance, which I initiated about ten years ago, and we start, and it's a um, a free, it's an opportunity to express the freedoms that everyone's dying for, and this is a genuine freedom of the people, the select board, the finance committee. Uh, Heather, the town administrator, you've got to write this time, work very hard to create these articles. And then these articles are presented. The town, all the voters of the town, including themselves, are guests. So, uh, not guests, but, but voting, the legislative uh, body of our government. The ex um, select board is the executive branch. All of the citizens, including all of the elected and appointed officials of the town, are the legislative branch of our government. And the concept is not to be complacent rubber stamps. Uh, when you hear an a motion under an article, raise your hand, uh, be recognized, uh, state your opinion, state your question. Uh, this is a, a, a true uh, democratic process, and I'm thrilled to, to be able to to, to allow this, and yet there are rules, and you know, anyone who speaks outside of uh, an article, um, that's not good. We, we only need to speak for the article on the floor. This isn't a select board, this isn't an information um, uh, session meeting or any other meeting. Any other questions? Yes. I think, yes, John? Say the hour turns uh, 10 p.m., what do you do? Um, I've been faced with that. Uh, when the hour turns 10 p.m., I want everyone to go home. If we're almost putting an article to rest, uh, it's really up to the town, uh, to the audience, to, to continue or not, or to postpone to another evening. So essentially, we play it by ear. But our bylaw states 7 to 10. Thank you, everybody. See you on uh, Tuesday, uh, May 19th.